Hello everyone, welcome to my farmhouse sewing room. I'm Marnay and today is the day we are going to make the Scrappy Stars video. We actually keep Today we're gonna to make the Scrappy Stars video. Only today, I'm gonna to do it a little bit differently because you can do this with any color fabric, any scrap that you have. I mean, it's just up to you how you wanna do it. So I was going through my stash this morning and trying to figure out how I wanna do this tutorial and I was gonna do something colorful, but then I found this fabric that I had bought a while ago at my local craft, or my local So What shop, fabric store here in Addison, New York. So this fabric is called Living Farm. And I love this fabric because it is so colorful. And I think it would be amazing for this fabric to be the center of my stars um, because it has like nine different animals in this. I think I'm going to fussy cut one of each one of them and make them the center of my star um, because they are so colorful. You could use the points of your stars in all of these colors which I thought about and I haven't made up my mind yet, but I do have another fabric here that coordinates well with this. And this one is called Wing It. And it looks like little colorful wings or plumes or feathers or whatever you wanna call them, but it really goes well with um, the Living Farm fabric, as you can see. And this Wing It fabric was found at my local fabric store, the So What Shop in Edison, New York as well. And I have had these for a while. And the thing with me with fabrics, I never know what I'm going to make out of something. I just, when I find something that I like that just draws me, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Some things I do, some things I don't. But I know, but when I'm thinking of a project, I know exactly what I'm going to do with that fabric and I go and dig it out. So. I kind of got distracted with this though because I bought this a while ago and I thought I really want to make something special but I just didn't know what. But I think the star blocks would be the great um, design to do in this and I could really showcase each of the colorful animals. And then the points of my stars would be these um, colorful little uh, winged plumes that really go nicely with the farm animals. So my background fabric. I was struggling to find a background fabric because I figured I could use any color in that farm fabric, but I ended up finding a yard of this um, plain light blue fabric that I bought at another fabric store that was uh, closing out and it was called the So Peaceful Shop and I think that one was in Campbell, New York. I loved her shop. So this was, I was going to use it on another quilt, but it didn't quite match so I just kept it. But I have a yard of each of these fabrics, so this would be a three yarder. But um, I really don't have a pattern for this quilt. I'm just gonna make the star blocks and um, we can put them together, you know, as we go or figure out what I wanna do. Um, but if you wanna follow along with me, great, because I'm gonna walk you through on how to make these star blocks. Um, they're very simple and they're only two size squares. I'm gonna do a four and a half block for my center. So I'm gonna cut out 12 blocks of this this living farm fabric where I fussy cut all these animals. So I'm going to need 12 of these in four and a half inch block square. And, and in my background fabric, um, let me see, we're going to need uh, three, eight. We're going to need eight background squares per block. So eight times 12 in four and a half square inch blocks in background fabric, that's what you're going to need. So. Eight times, eight times 12, do the math. <laughs> I can't figure it up right away. And then for our star points, we are gonna need star points cut in three and a half inch squares, and you're gonna need eight of them per block as well. Oh, 96, thank you, Jim. So you're gonna need 96 four and a half inch squares out of your um, background fabric. And I have a yard, so I'm hoping that is enough. Um, I'm winging it. So if you see this video, you'll know it worked out. <laughs> so, um, and the thing of it is, after we get the 12 blocks made, there is so many variations that you can do with that. You can put borders in between, which my first star quilt that I did ever um, was such a distraction you are. <laughs> My first um, star quilt that I made into a quilt was actually I made it with Jim's mom and we did quilts and we called them sister quilts because we did our stars in um, batik fabric and actually our borders were in batik and I think 
my back was not a fatigue, it was a salad. But the quilts turned out absolutely beautiful and it's hanging in my room and I wanted to take it off the rack and show it to you but I thought it might be better just to um, follow along with me and we can just figure this out because I really don't ever have a plan with my quilts sometimes. Sometimes they just come together and I'm not cookie cutter by no means. I like to do things my own way and put my own spin on things and I'm a kind of, um, as I go, <laughs> you know, how it turns out. So I'm thinking if there's any of this leftover fabric, we could do little uh, four patches, pinwheels. I mean, we could put borders in or you have so much color in this that we could add any kind of borders, you know, with the, the star blocks, the star blocks. We could put the star blocks together with no borders and then do a couple of borders around it. Or you can border in between the star blocks. It's totally up to you. But it's such a fun way to um, create something and just use your own um, your own imagination. So I'm gonna get started and um, cut up all my squares and then we will go from there, okay? All right guys, I got my fabrics cut up. And it's been a bit for me to get this video put together for you, but I really want to get this done and get it um, so you can see how to, how simple this is. Um, I've got my fabrics all cut up and I've got only two blocks left to make because I sewed most of them together and I really wanna show you how, um, how they look when they're together, but I want to show you how they're assembled as well. So the thing of it is when I told you I had like three yards of each, each of my fabrics, I did not have enough blue and that was the background fabric. So I had to improvise and go in my stash and find something that was close enough to match, but it's okay because this is scrappy. If you want to make this more coordinated, you might want to get more than a yard of blue for the background, but I didn't have enough. But this is just for fun for me and I'm just trying to show you and share how you know it, great it would look with just a little bit of things that you have. So I had the, the animal fabrics and I fussy cut out eight of the animal blocks and I used them for the center of my star. And then I took the, the yellow with the feathers and I made them the background point of my stars. And then I got in my batiks because I have a lot of scraps and I cut out um, four batik points and overlapped them, you know, overlapped my points, which I will show you how this is done. So I'm gonna move you down and I'm gonna show you what I have done and um, and show you how it looks. And then I'll get on and show you how I uh, put it together. So I'm just gonna move you down, bear with me. Okay, so now you can kind of see on my table here, I have the, um, the stars, oops, this don't belong there. So I've got background fabric, and this background fabric was a light blue, but it had tiny little white hearts in it, so I just incorporated that in. It, when it all gets together and it's all quilted, you know, it's really not going to be, you know, noticeable. I just want everything to kind of match, and I'm kind of getting my lint off here. So you can see I have the yellow points in the background, and then I did all of the batik points. I overlapped them, and that's what we're going to do to, to assemble the star. But um, I'm going to make 12 blocks and I'm just going to go through what I already have and show you how cool the designs look. It looks amazing so far. And um, this is the cow. I've got a lot of loose threads here, so don't mind my mess. I'm just kind of going through. This is the pig. Um, he turned out great. I got the rooster. I love how the batiks really pull out color in like the water color in the animals. The animals is not a batik. But the batiks look great with it because it looks like a watercolor, and I just think that it matches. And I love the little yellow and uh, colorful plumes in the background. There's a goat, <laughs> um, the barn owl, and this is going to be corner squares. Now, in the corner, I'm going to do three across and, and four down. So, in my four corners, I'm going to use this um, center for my four corners. So, I've got... Um, three of those done so far. So I've only got one more animal block to make and one more corner block to make, but I really just want to go through. And the corner blocks I did in all batiks, so it made them kind of different to stand out. So, and um, I've got two blocks left and I'm going to show you how I lay these out. So here is my, move this one aside. This is my center square. So I'm going to put this in the middle of my design board to start. And these design boards really help a lot to lay out your blocks. And when you set them up next to your sewing machine, everything stays in place so nothing gets moved because this is kind of techy when, when you want to sew these together, you want to get them right. Um, there's lots of um, 
videos out there on YouTube on how to make a design board. It's really just a piece of cardboard. But I glued a piece of batting on it and I just kind of made a frame around it with some two and a half inch if you're interested in making something like that, but it really works well. So my background squares, I am layering them all around the middle square and there'll be um, eight of these background squares. So there's three at the bottom, three at the top, and then one on each side. And you can see it's three, six, and eight. And then your ninth block is uh, your middle. So it's basically like a nine patch. Now, um, my points. Since I'm doing the, the feathers in the background, I'm going to lay them on first. And I'm going to show you how I lay them on. So these are just the three and a half inch squares. And these squares are four and a half. So it's four and a half and three and a half. And I think I explained that in the first video. Um, what you need for this block. It's only two sizes. Your middle and your background squares are all four and a half. Your points are going to be three and a half. And all of my three and a half points, I have folded them in half to look like a triangle. And you can draw a line on the back of these if you want to, or I like to just fold mine. And then that crease line is going to be my guide to where to sew. But first, I want to lay these out on my, my, my design board so I can figure out how I want it to look. So I'm going to alternate all of these points and I will sh sh soon be able to have you see. This point is gonna go here and then I'm gonna follow with that point there. And then I'm gonna follow with this point here. And then the next point will follow here. Now you can see that it almost looks like a friendship star or kind of like a spinning wheel. And I want these to stay in that particular order. I don't want this over here meeting or, you know, they all need to go in the in the opposite corner. So this corner, then the next corner away from each other, and then this corner, and then this corner. And this is how I'm gonna sew these together. So when I take this over to my sewing machine, I can open these up and I'm going to sew. I'm, I'm gonna sew to just the inside of this fold line. So when I sew it, this will fold back over and that's gonna be my first point. But after I sew it, I'm going to cut this back part off, these two layers, so you get rid of that bulk. And then I'm going to show you what you can do with those um, later on. <laughs> I have some already here for you, but um, we're going to take those cutoffs and we're going to re-sew them together and we're going to make some pinwheels. And the pinwheels turn out really great. And uh, so anyway, we're going to sew all these on first, all your points. I'm going to sew just inside that fold line where I'm going to cut it off. And then this is going to fold over. So we're going to go to the sewing machine and we're going to sew these all down. And then after these are all sewed down and the back parts are cut off, you're going to take your next set of points, which are my batik points, and we are going to layer them on. So I'm going to show you how I lay this out again. So you're going to lay one there. And all your points are going to go in the opposite direction. Get this out of the way. Lay this on here and lay this one on here. So now you're gonna see that we're coming together as a star. So when I open these up, I have a fold line. If I can get it open, we're going to have a fold line. If I can stop moving things. And you can see I'm gonna sew just on the inside of that fold line so that that will fold back over. Same way with all of them. You're gonna open them up and I'm gonna sew just very close to that fold line on this side, the side, the part that I'm going to cut off so that the, the outside one is going to fold back over and I'm going to sew along here, fold it back over and open this one up and then sew it back over. And then we're going to cut off this, this back part. Before you fold it over, we're going to trim this off. But I'm going to go through all of this with you and show you how I do it. But this is how we lay it out. So you're going to sew the back ones on first, and then I'm going to overlap them with the, with the top ones. And um, sew them down, cut them off. And then we're going to sew it, sew it together like a nine patch. And then we will trim it down here on the, the cutting mat. And we'll trim it, trim it to a 12-inch block. So um, I've got another block here to do. I'm going to take you over to my sewing machine and I'm going to show you how we stitch this together and I can pick up my whole design board and carry it over and keep it this, I can set it down right by my machine and keep this block all together so you don't get confused and misplacing stuff because I did that on one block and I messed it up and I had to find an extra piece to fill in and yeah, I was kind of mad at myself. So it's very easy to mess up. 
So, um, all right, I'm gonna take you over to the sewing machine, okay? Okay, I've got this all set up by my machine and I'm hoping that you can see as I sew this in here, I've tried to position my camera. So first of all, I've got my design board here and I'm just gonna pick up the outer colors of my, my block and set them aside because I really just want to concentrate on the yellow ones. So my first block, I'm going to pick this one up. I'm gonna open it up and you can pin if you want to. I'm not much of a pinner when it comes to small things like this. And then I'm gonna get this in here on my machine diagonally and I'm gonna just try to keep my needle to the inside of that fold line and keep it as straight as possible and keep everything in, in line. And just kind of either stay on that fold line. I like to try to stay on just the inside of that fold line or the outside, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. And I'm gonna cut my thread. And as you can see, I have this, and it goes this way. Now, what thing is about the design board is you can set this back over so you can see that this looks like a friendship star. Now, if I turned it this way, you're gonna see that that's wrong because you don't want the points to come together. They have to be in the opposite corner. So all your points are gonna kind of spin around, which makes sense. So there's my first one and that's sewed. And I'm going to go to my next one, which is this one. And you can chain, you can chain these if you want, but I'm gonna keep it simple and just do one at a time so I can kind of show you how we lay these back on there. Um, I'm usually a lot faster at this, but I want to um, make it understandable for everybody to get. These are very simple stars to make. They're fun to do it in a lot of different ways, and you can make them in any size. Because there's only an inch difference in the sizes, so. This is a great thing to play with. You have plenty of space left over on the outside here, so you don't, it's very forgiving if you, you mess up. So there's my next one, and that one's gonna go this way. We don't want the points going together. And you can see that that lays down very nicely. And then I'm gonna go to the next one and get this one in there. The thing about these design boards, it helps keep everything exactly where it should be so you don't get anything twisted or moved because man, I have done that way too many times. I don't like seam ripping. And if I've art and if you cut it off, <laughs> forget it, you're gonna have to start over because after you cut off the back part of the point, that's the point of no return. So, and I'm gonna fold that back over and we don't want it to go that way, it goes this way. So you have to remember, I love these design boards because I can see where everything goes and it makes it nice and easy to, um, to keep it laid out. So one more point to, to sew on for this background points. Okay, so there is the last one. So those are all sewed on. So now my next step is to open these back up and we're going to trim these back parts off. And I'm gonna grab a pair of scissors. You can use your rotary cutter or you can just cut them off. And I like to cut them off as, cl as close to it as um, a quarter of an inch. So let me grab some scissors. And we will cut those off. Oh, where is my other pair of scissors? Hmm. All right, I'm missing a pair of scissors. I'll blame my husband for those. <laughs> so um, I'm going to start with this one. And then maybe I'll just kind of move you around so you can kind of, see. maybe you can see what I'm doing. I don't know. I have to lay everything on my lap. And remember that this, this part is the part you want to keep. So when that goes to the inside, you want to cut the outside back part off. And these scissors are probably not the sharpest, but they'll work for now because these are my paper cutting scissors. Now, this back part that we just cut off, we're going to set that aside because we're going to sew those back together and make some half square triangles. And we're going to turn the half square triangles into um, pinwheels. And they make great borders for... Um, putting around your quilt. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut these off with my dull scissors. 
My husband was helping quilt last night and I think he stole my scissors. And you know, of course, to put anything back, I gotta remember the right corners that they go in. That's what I love about laying them out. So you can see with no mistakes. Oh, hey, my scissors, they magically appeared. These are much better. So let's, um, yeah, these cut so much better. They're nice and sharp. I'm sure most people know about the saying about paper scissors and fabric scissors. Don't let anybody cut with your uh, fabric scissors. That's why I keep an old pair of white scissors for um, cutting paper. So my last um, background here to cut off on this set of star legs. And then we're going to get on to the next step. So I have four backgrounds um, that are cut off and I'm going to set them aside because we're going to sew them together. And then we're going to put this back onto here. So, okay, so let's move back over here where we got everything laid out. Everything looks right. Corner, 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 corner. Okay, so these all look right. So now I'm going to take my other set of star legs and we're going to um, lay these on where they go. Just like that. Your folded corners are going to go into the folded corners. And then this one here. So that's how our star is going to look. And I always start with this one in the middle. That's just what I do, but you can start anywhere you want. And I'm going to start with this one. I'm going to open it up and keep it lined up and in the corners. And I think I should move you over here so you can just see where I'm sewing. And we're going to overlap. This one's going to overlap the other corner, as you can see. And I want to get it in there just nice and straight. Everything lines up. And keep my needle down into the inside of that line. Where I'm sewing. Is one done so this one goes back on there one will grab the next one this batik with all the colors on it it looks really cool it's one great thing about batiks they're they're so colorful and they just really make cool designs especially when you have lots of color and who doesn't love anything that's colorful i would call these stars scrappy but yet yeah, they're a little bit coordinated so i mean this is just a great way to have fun with, you know, what you have. I buy a lot of fabrics and I never know what to do with it until I decide I'm making something and I'm like, oh, I know just the fabric for that. And then when I want it, I can't ever find it. <laughs> I did that the other day, looking for a fabric and couldn't find it. Knew I had it. Finally found it when I wasn't looking for it. Okay, last one. Okay, so all of our points are on. Now we have to open these up and starting with this one, I'm going to cut this back layer off. So I'm just gonna kind of move you around and you can watch me um, cut this off and do as I do. So I'm just gonna try to keep it a quarter of an inch and I'm guesstimating but you don't want to get too close to the stitches. And then I'm going to set that aside because we're going to sew it together. Put that back on my design board, go to the next one. And cut this one off. And, and then 
this one. I love this one. I love that yellow and the dots. I'm a polka dot freak too. <laughs> Ask anybody that knows me. Okay, that one and then one more. Okay, we're gonna set those aside, the cutoffs. And then now we have a star block. Also, I'm going to move it back over here. And now we're going to sew this together like a nine patch. So I'm gonna show you what I like to do. Starting at the top, I like to lay over all of the blocks on the left to right to the middle. And what I like to do, after I get these all lined up, is I like to stick a pin in them just to kind of keep them together because I'm going to chain feed these through my machine and I'm going to leave them attached, which I will get to. And I wanna make sure they're all lined up and get me a pin in them. So you'll see that I've got a pin in all of these and I'm gonna start with the top. Let me see if you can make sure you can see where I'm sewing. Okay, so I'm going to um, start with this one and I want it a quarter of an inch. Usually I have a quarter inch tape on my machine, but I don't have it on here, but I know where the quarter inch is because I've had the tape on here and I can just um, keep everything together. So quarter inch tape definitely helps a lot. Um, use your best quarter inch guide. So let's see, I'm gonna take this pin out. I'm gonna wind it up just a little bit better. Beat it in there a quarter of an inch. I want my needle down there. And then the next one. Good, quarter of an inch. In there. Take my pin out. Keep it nice and straight. All right, now that I've chain sewed these through, I want to leave them all together. So I've kind of got them in a row here. Now, the trick to these is you want to press your seams in the opposite way. So the first one that I'm going to flip open, I want to keep the seam going this way. Hopefully you can see. And I'm going to finger press it down. The next seam, I want it to go this way. So I'm going to flip this this way and then I'm gonna open it like this. So that now that seam goes the opposite way. And I'm going to finger press it down. And then this one, I want it to go this way. So I'm just going to open this one up. And we've got that side of the block sewed on. I'm a backwards sewer, so I'm going to turn this around. And I'm going to put these over here on this side. And I'm going to pin them. So everything stays in place. And my suggestion is do things your own way, whatever works best for you. I'm a little bit opposite because I'm single-handed and I do things the way that's easiest for me. So I suggest that you do things um, as easy for you and what you feel comfortable with. So I'm just a little bit different than everybody else <laughs> and it's obvious, so. Just throwing it out there. Okay, so now I'm going to start, and these are all together. And I'm gonna chain sew these through so everything stays together and it makes it so much easier and so much easier to line up. So quarter of an inch, and I'm gonna sew this side of the block. So I'm gonna take my pin out as I go so I don't sew over it. And don't sew your fingers. Of an inch in, and I 
probably should cut off these little loose threads. I'm going to have to cut them off when I get to them. I'm going to take that pin out because I need to straighten. I want to make sure everything aligns as close as I can get it. I know we're all not perfect sewers, but I try to get as close as I can. Close enough is good enough, as I've learned. And if anybody's ever watched Angela Walters on the Midnight Quilt Show, I love her line. Close enough is good enough. And I'm like, that's my motto. So try to get it as good as you can. And then the last one, quarter of an inch. And get this one through. And cut. Okay. Now, now that we've got that side sewed together. I'm going to lay this back up on my design board and we are going to open it up and we want to finger press our seams going the same way that the last seam we pressed it over. So the bottom one here is going this way. So I'm going to um, push this one so it's that way so I can get the seam to go to, the, to my right. <laughs> and finger press it down because when I sew the, the rest of the rows together, I want the seams to nest. Okay, and this one is gonna go this way, so we're just gonna flip that one right over that way. And I'm gonna finger press it down, and then the next one needs to go this way. <laughs> so I'm gonna manipulate that around so that the seam goes the opposite way that it should. And I'm going to finger press it down. And I've got all these little loose threads here, and I really don't want them sticking out of my seam, so I'm going to try to cut them. And normally I do cut off every piece of thread when I sew something, but I'm just trying to save time and show you how to do this without boring anybody to death. So I've got a few more loosey ones here. Here's another one. I don't want them to get into my, my star. So now I'm going to take this and fold it over to this side. And when you look, my seams are nested right together. And they should feel like they're nice and flat. You can feel it with your fingers. Um, this one here is the same way. I'm not going to pin, but um, I think I've got it right on. So I'm just going to go ahead and sew it. So I'm going to kind of make sure you can see that how I'm feeding this through my machine. I'm an inside sewer, as I've always told everybody. So I have to have things going to the inside. Most normal people sew from this side. But since I'm right-handed and I'm single-handed, I have more control on this side, so this is how I do it. So, and I want to make sure my, my ends are even across, quarter of an inch, and start feeding it through. And my seams are nested. I can feel it with my finger. It feels nice and flat. So I'm just going to um, feed it through. And get this straight here. I want to make sure this one is lined up, feels good. And I'm just going to guide it through, making sure everything stays nice and flat. And I know I live dangerously given my fingers close to my presser, but it's a good way to get your fingers sewed, but... I'm a rookie now, I've already sewed my fingers, <laughs> but I don't want to do it again. It was a horrible sight. Okay, so now I'm going to do this on the opposite side. I'm just going to fold the other side over and nest up the seams and get this in. We're in the home stretch now. So I'm going to line it up at the top. I can already see that my seams nest together. It feels nice and flat. And get this in here. And I'm just going to keep it as straight as I can. That quarter inch seam. Seam allowance is very important to be the same and consistent, especially when you're sewing together blocks. Or quilting. Oh, that one kind of got pinched over a little bit, but it won't matter. When it gets quilted, it all lays down. I just want to do the best that I can. All right, our block is together, and this is exciting. So now, we're going to open it up. Get you back over here so you can see a little better. And we will open this up and I will finger press it down. And I will take this to my iron and we will um, go 
faucets. And so I've got each seam. This, this seam is going this way. This seam here is going the other way. It doesn't really matter which way they go. I just want them to go the way they want to. And I just want this to lay nice and flat. So as you can see, I've got my horse. So um, I will press this and I will trim it. But um, I'm going to get the next block laid down for you and show you how I do the next block as well. Um, the next block is a little bit different. And let's see that. All right. So this is the next block and it's a corner block. And this one has um, all batik all batik points. I don't have two different batik points because this one is going to have the feathery thing in the middle, the feather plumes, whatever you want to call them. I call them plumes. And then my outside border blocks, my background blocks, my background squares, my background squares four and a half inches. And you can see I've got some um, little heart fabric in here because I didn't have enough. So I might want to spread those out a little bit. I'm not sure how many I got here. Oh, I think all the rest of them are. So let's let's um, try to balance this. I'm going to take the two solid ones and I'll put one at the top and one at the bottom. And then I'll just fill it in with all the little heart blocks. And they, they really match up. So I'm not sweating this that I didn't have enough of the, the, the background squares in the light blue. Oh, these little hearts, I gotta make sure I got them on the right side. This one doesn't look like it's on the right side. I have to look in the light. So what is the right side? I don't think it matters much. I think I had them all upright. That looks right. It's just the lighting. Okay. So there we've got our, our center square and our background fabrics, our background blocks all set up. So I've got eight points. And these are all the batik points. I don't have any background points, but I'm going to take four of them. So, um, let's see, one, two, three, four. These four, and then these these four will be the overlapping, overlapping blocks. So we're going to take one here at the top and start with this corner, this corner, this corner, and then this corner. I like that one. That one's got a cool flower in it. Let's trade that one out for a different one. Let's do, let's see, let's put this one here. I'm going to try to balance stuff because of the green, the green, the purple, and the purple. Yeah, let's do that. I really like this flowery design on this point. And I'm thinking maybe I might want that to kind of shine through. So, and then I've got a couple other ones here. So they'll, they'll look nice. So let's set those aside. And we're going to start with these. And you can see it looks like the little friendship star. So I'm going to start with my first square, which I always start with this one because that's just how I roll. And I'm going to open it up. And I'm going to sew it just on the inside of this fold right here. So I'm going to move you over here so you can see on the machine. And we'll sew these down and we'll get this one done. Just to make sure that you have this this down and how to lay this out and put these together and I have to tell y'all um, as I was cutting these up and um, getting this ready and I sewed some of the blocks together already I got my little sister on to doing this and she's a beginner quilter she doesn't know a whole lot about um, putting things together like this but I told her how easy it was and she's doing it and she is amazed and I can't wait for her to show you all what she's done, but I'm going to wait until next week. And um, when I get my blocks put together in the next um, episode for the Scrappy Stars, because I'm going to show you how I get these blocks put together, I haven't decided whether I'm going to do a sashing for it or how I want to do it just yet. But um, if you all want to do this little design, I would love to see what you come up with. You can um, email me pictures at countryfarmhousequilting at gmail.com or you can send me a picture or follow me on my Instagram. Um, I'm under Broken Wing Sewing Creator. Um, I don't get on there a whole lot. I'm, I'm, I'm not techie, <laughs> um, but I do have an account and I, I just don't have a lot of time for techie stuff. I'm very busy, but I do look at it occasionally, but that's a great way to share pictures as well. Um, 
this is just such a cool design and it's just fun to do it with whatever colors, prints, whatever you pick. You can't go wrong. My sister did hers in, in a mermaid fabric that she had left over and I can't, and I told her, I was like, I'm going to have her show you all what she did because, um, she did a phenomenal job with wrong way. This one goes here, Marnay. Okay. And then the last one of the inside points. Yeah, she did a great job. And um, she's already got her pinwheels done. And she doesn't have them sewed on yet. But she's going to have a finished quilt. And I really want her to share it with you. Um, if she can do it and I can do it, you can do it. it. They just turn out amazing. And it's amazing to see how different you can take this design and do it in different colors and the different looks that you get and how you place your blocks and if you sash them or you don't sash them you add borders or different colors i mean it's just all amazing so i know that i have some of that colorful cow now oh, see that's the wrong way i don't want them points to go <laughs> i wanted to go here so they're all sewed on so let's trim them off real quick so i'm going to trim them off on my leg as i usually do on my lap this is how i how i roll but I'm going to open this up and I'm going to cut this back part off. I'm getting a little close there. And it doesn't matter how you cut these because when you sew these together and you press them open and make these little squares, we're going to trim them down to two and a half inch blocks. So um, just a heads up on that too. Um, but we'll get to that. So I'm just going to get these back points cut off and... Um, We'll get this star block um, done and trimmed. And then I'm going to show you what to do with these little cutoffs because I think these are amazing. They're an amazing addition to your quilt because they match and they look really cool. Wrong way, this way. Okay, see it when I did that point up to that one? Oh, you can't see it. Um, to lay them out. But <laughs> we all make mistakes. It's just part of sewing. My intention is not to make any mistakes because I don't like to seam up. And I don't <laughs> met anybody that likes to. All right, one more to cut off. Let's see what I'm doing here. All right. Threads. Okay. All of my blocks are trimmed. Do I got them right? Going around, wrong, wrong, wrong. Okay. Back over here. Okay, so you got them all, I got them all trimmed. Now we're going to grab the other set of four prints and decide where I want to put them. I think I like this one on this one. And then we're going to put this one in the opposite end. I think they kind of match. I don't know. You have to figure out what's pleasing to your eyes. Because this is pleasing to mine. And that one there. And then this one here with a flower on it that I liked. I didn't want to cover that up with a background point. I want it to show. Because I think I like that flower. And I just think it looks cool. So this is what my star is going to look like on this one. So let's get this one sewed together. And then we can get on to uh, um, the cutoffs that we're going to make our pinwheels out of. Because that's exciting. And the designs are amazing. So there's that one. I'll just flop that over for now. And get the next one. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. Let me just move over a little bit. This one on. Quarter of an inch seam. Oh, no, not quarter of an inch. Inside the line. <laughs> I'm getting way ahead of myself. There is no quarter inch seam on the. You're sewing diagonally. Get your points on. I'm sounding like a broken leopard. Okay, there's that one. These go rather quickly once you get going and you know what you're doing. But the life-saving thing to this is a design board. And if you don't have one, I suggest that um, try and make one. Um, just a piece of cardboard. And flannel works well. Um, quilt batting works well to hold your blocks. 
you know, and keep everything in place so that you can sew and it keeps everything in line so you're not picking it up from one area and moving it to another area and then you turn it the wrong way, which I've done so many times, it's frustrating. So, all right, this is our last point to get on. And we'll cut these off and get them sewed together. Inside the line, let's get her done. Okay, cut, and then we are going to cut off these back, back parts. Let's see what I'm doing here. Okay. This is where another hand would come in handy, but I, I've learned to improvise. <laughs> So there's one, and two, and I want to cut it about a quarter of an inch for my seam. Threads, oh my goodness. And the last one. Okay. Now, once again, back over to the design board. Let's see if I can get this down. Okay. Now, got these all ready to go. We're going to take the top and face it to the to the right, all just like this, lined up, put together, gonna sew it together just like a nine patch. And chain them through with a quarter of an inch. up as perfect as I can get it. Okay. First row. This one's going together a little bit faster, I think. <laughs> I want to try to make sure everybody gets it. So I wanted to do two. So the first one is going to get folded. The seam is going to go to my left and I'm gonna finger press it. The next one, I want the seam to go to my right. So I'm gonna pull that over and get that seam going to the right. And then, then the next one to the left. And now I'm going to turn this around and I'm going to start and fold this over, fold this one over, fold this one over. And I'm going to pin, and like I said, do whatever you're comfortable with on turning or however you do it. Um, I suggest pinning them to keep them in place because I'm gonna chain sew this through. I'm right-handed and I'm an inside sewer, so this is why I do this. So, okay, and I've got everything in position. So I'm gonna start at the top of this one. And a quarter inch, get it started. Hoping you can see what I'm doing here. Keep that going. Okay, next. Take the pin out. Keep 
big as I can. And don't let anything get folded or twisted because that could be disastrous. Okay, I'll take that last pen out. Make sure everything is aligned as best as I can. And cut. Okay, back to the design board. see what I'm doing here so we get everything laid out all right so this seam under here is going to my right so I want to manipulate that to go to the right because we do want the seams to nest and that one doesn't want to cooperate it wants to go the opposite way but I need it to go to the right so I finger press it down so that's the ease. This one needs to go to the left, so we're just going to flip that one over and press. And then this top one has to go to the right, so we need to manipulate it to the right and finger press and into the lay. There, so look at that. We are coming together as a star. A lot of loose threads here, but um, we'll worry about those later, most of them anyway. I just don't want any coming out on my seams. Okay, everything's together. We're gonna flip this over and we're gonna nest the seams. The seam is nested. They should fit right together nicely. My blocks are all easy. Um, yes, that fits together. They're all even and nice and square. So if you have a consistent quarter of an inch, they will come together nicely. And if they don't line up, you can kind of, with your needle down, you can kind of pull it to, to fit in, but they should fit right together nice. And when I stop my needles down, I kind of just feel, and if it doesn't feel like it's in there, you can kind of um, almost stretch it to fit. They should lay nicely together. And it kind of does. So I'm just going to go ahead. Things don't always go to plan, but it's nice when it does. All right. Oops, I'm getting way off here. All right, let me cut because I need to back up because I'm getting off. And I just want to go back in. I'm at a quarter of an inch. I'm getting too close to the edge here and I feel like I've veered off. So I'm just going to drop my needle back up, up here and then restart and try to keep my fabric at a quarter of an inch. I'm not paying attention. I started to get off and I don't want it to be off. I want to try to keep it as straight as I can. So. There we go. All right, that's the first one. Oh, I want to get this opened up and seam is slightly off on that one, but it's not enough to really want to go back in and fix it. Remember, close enough is good enough. When you have this quilted and all put together, you're not going to notice tiny little differences. You just want to be as good as you can. trim this off to 12 inches so if things are slightly off which my block here is slightly off I don't know why that happens I'm usually right on but these blocks are going to be trimmed to 12 inches so I'm not sweating it all right this is the last one so <laughs> I 
think everything is going to be fine. So let's move this over, put this up, and we have our last star. So everything is sewed together. So um, I'm going to press this. So that's that. This is the last star block. Let's see, where can I get this so you can see it? My camera. Okay, last one done. So now I'm going to show you what we do with the cutoff. So let me move this. And we have all of these. So all of these I am going to sew together. And I'm going to sew these together off camera. And I'm going to open them up and show you, and I'm gonna open them up and I'm going to press them. And then when we get to the cutting table to trim down the last two blocks, I'm going to show you how we do these, how to place them, and I'll show you what they look like just to save a little time. So, okay, so we'll get on to the next step. Okay, I've got my stars set up here on the mat and I got my camera so you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm just gonna square this up to 12 inches. I have my special cutting table here that has my special lid, and of course it's going to hit my camera, so just let me adjust here for a minute. Sorry about that, I thought I was ready. Okay, so you can kind of see, I'm hoping. So I want to trim this up, and I'm trying to align my middle to the middle, because I have a 12 inch slatted grid here, and I try to keep my middle in between the four and the eight, so it, it's evenly trimmed on each side. My table was built for me, and this works great for squaring up things and um, trimming. So, and now I'm going to turn it, and I'm going to line up my lines in those middle lines of my 12 inch grid, put my lid down, and I'm going to trim it up. And it's going to be a perfect 12 inches. So when I put my blocks together, they're all going to line up nice with no unevenness. So there's that one. Oops, I'm sorry, one. And then we've got this one here. And I'm going to line it up in the middle so that my seams are on that middle four inch lines in the middle. So I'm even on both sides. And then I can just trim it up nice and square. I love this thing my slats line up with my lines on my mat this makes it very easy because I am single-handed and um, I don't have to hold a ruler I can do a ruler but I have weights that I put on them and this is so much easier my husband designed this for me so I didn't have to sit on the floor and um, cut cut fabric and trim fabric and square up blocks, which, you know, I just did what I had to do. But this makes life so much easier, and I love it. I use this thing every day, every day I sew. So there's my, my next one. So I told you about these little cutoffs. I, chains, I chain sewed these through my machine. I haven't even cut them apart, but I did press them all open. And I want to show you what we're going to do with these. So I'm going to kind of cut some of them apart. And um, I will show you how we're going to square these up into two and a half inches. And when I square these up, we're going to make a pinwheel out of these. This one here is kind of curling on me now. So we will make a pinwheel out of four of these that will come together kind of like this after they're, they're squared up. But I've got a whole stack here, and I was telling you about these, how we would square these up. So when I square them up to two and a half inches, I sew them together into four patches. And some of them have these little pieces where they're cut off from the, the bottom of the first point that we sewed on. So it kind of gives you this little fan in the middle of your, your pinwheels, which kind of makes a cool effect. And these line up great to make nice little borders and stuff on your quilt. So these all have the little the little fan in them and then I have some of them that don't have the fan in them which I'll kind of go through and here's some and if they're not quite perfect don't sweat it these are just great to make little borders I'm trying to get these all into camera so um there's some that without the little fans in them and then here's some with just the little plumes on them 
they look great. Um, just a really neat effect to make like borders when you sew them together and you can kind of mix and match them and use them as borders around your quilt. You could put a sashing in between them to make them fit. It's all up to you. So I'm gonna show you how I square mine up. So I have a 45 degree line on my mat right here. In the middle of this where my fabric comes together, I'm going to line up the, the fabric where it comes together on that 45 degree line. And I know that there's tools out there that you can get that you can um, square up your blocks, but for me to keep these straight and the, the points come to the end, this is how I do it. So I'm kind of going to show you. So I laid my two of my blocks under this 45 degree line and then I'm going to lower my lid and I'm going to trim two and a half inches on either side on both of these and I can only do two at a time but this works for me and then I'm going to take that and turn it and take this one and turn it move my scraps now I'm going to lay this back on here anywhere and as long as that point right here at the top lines up on one of my lines here, so I'll just do this one on the bottom. I'm gonna line that point up to the line and then I'll be able to trim on either side the excess at two and a half. And I trimmed them at two and a half inches in my slats. And then when I pull them off, my scraps, you can kind of see that they're perfectly squared so that the, both points end up in each corner. And same way with this one your both your colors your blue and your purple meet in each corner so they're perfectly square so when you put these together I can figure out how to do this right there's a half a pinwheel I'm going to do the other one and show this to you again um, you could probably do this on your mat if you have one of these rotary mats with a straight edge cutter cutter you're just putting your seam along that 45 degree line which work, this works great for me. And I line it up so I make sure that I can hit that two and a half inch when I trim, but it's hanging over this line a little bit. So I know I'm cutting off a little bit on each side to try to get it, you know, to two and a half. So here's a, here's a line. And if you go over two blocks and then a half, I know I'm gonna cut it at two and a half. So let me just move those. And then, uh, I will trim these two and a half, that one and that one. And then I'm gonna turn these to the side, move my scraps. And then I'm just gonna put this anywhere. As long as I can line up the top on, the, on a line and on the side where that corner touches a line, I know I'm good and I can square this up perfectly. Same way with this one, this is pretty close. I can get it right over there. So it's nice and straight and that end of that corner is gonna just meet that line. And I can take off what little bit, and sometimes it's a little more on the other side, but when I take this off and get rid of the excess, you can see that they line up. They're perfect. The little points are in each corner, you know, of both the colors. So now, when I wanna make this a pinwheel, let me put that there, that there. Put this here. And this one here. So now we're gonna sew these together. So I will fold this one over on top of this one. And fold this one over on top of this one. And then I will sew it down. I will chain sew it in my machine. I'll sew it down, open them up and they're sewed together, you open them back up and then you take this and fold it to here. And of course you will sew it down this side and then you would um, press it open and you get this. And you shouldn't have to trim these after you, you know, because they're already two and a half perfect. And if your seam allowance is good and you sew them together, like I showed you, like a pinwheel, you shouldn't have to trim this because this will end up measuring four and a half. One, two, three, four. Yes, it'll measure four and a half inches square. So that's how you do the pinwheels. So, ugh, my hair's hanging on my face. Your homework is is to um, 
get your blocks made. Um, after seeing this and making stars, I hope you're seeing stars. Um, take out some colorful fabrics and just have fun with it. And I am going to be back next week and you can have your blocks ready and we will figure out how to sew these together with sashing, without sashing. Um, do you want to sew them together with no sashing in between the stars and put a nice generous couple of colors of borders around it? Or, you know, you can put sashings in between all of your star blocks and have a really colorful border around it. It's up to you. Um, but find some fun colors, fun fabrics. Picture fabrics are great for the middle of your stars. Colorful points, different colors, scraps. It doesn't matter. And the stars can be made in any size. So we've done four and a half and three and a half. But you could make them smaller and do a three and a half by a two and a half. It's up to you. Um, play with it. It's just fabric. You know, I mean, worst case scenario, you might have to tear it out, <laughs> you know, but this is a fun project. Anybody can do it. And I'm going to get back with you next week and I'm going to have my blocks put together and I'm going to show off what I put together and how I bordered my pinwheels around. And I'm also going to show you my sister Glenda's quilt that she had made because she's gotten quite further on it than I've got on mine. And I really want her to show it off because this is a great beginner friendly thing to do. I mean, it's really fun. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video um, on stars and you're seeing stars and want to make stars. You know, it's great. So if you like this video, please like, please subscribe. I have so much more to show. So, and I'm hoping to see you back here soon in my sewing room. Take care and have a great day.